Hey, welcome back to another compilation video of the three questions on educators that inspire series. And uh, in this week's edition, we are going to look at the question, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? And we got some compilation videos, people sharing some of the things that they learned that they wish they could have told themselves. And there, there's two reasons I share this video specifically. And the first one is that a lot of these people have that share their answers to this question have had amazing careers, um, are amazing influences on myself, on teachers, not only in their schools, but globally, and they've had a tremendous impact. And I wanted you to see that they have learned and grown in their, in their career. Because I think a lot of times what we see is actually where a person is, but we don't see where they started or some of the bumps they've had on the road. I think sharing that journey is really important. And I think that leads to a second reason why I share this video is to really embody that some of the most inspiring educators are always learning. They're always growing. They're always getting better. And so not only will you be inspired by some of these stories and um, to see like from some of the people that have shared them, but hopefully they give good advice that you can consider because I think uh, some of these people shared lessons in their first year that made me think about, hey, am I doing this in my 20th plus year? Am I still embodying this stuff? And that's, you know, thinking about this as kind of seeing how people grow, but how can we get better through hearing these stories? So I hope you enjoy this uh, episode of this compilation of some of my favorite stories of um, what advice would you give to your future teacher self, really putting ourselves as a role of the learner to help not only ourselves grow, but everyone else around us. Thanks for listening to that episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Well, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that I really thought was great and I wanted to be early, really early on, I wanted to be the cool teacher. I wanted to mm -hmm. be the uh, the cool, the popular teacher. I was a good teacher. I was. I, I, I was. I consider myself to be, even looking back, I was a quality teacher. Um, but one of the things I would definitely tell my, myself back is don't worry about being the cool teacher. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Stop it. You know, just let your actions speak for themselves, themselves, and um, don't worry about that. And plus, here's the thing: the second you become a teacher, your cool points go out the window. You're, you're, you're an adult. <laughs> you're, it's, it's, stop it! You're, you're an adult. You're a grown up. It doesn't matter. You're a teacher. I don't care how young you look. You're now a teacher. You are goofy. You're you're, you know. And even though I was teaching pre-K to third grade. I was teaching little kids. You're still an old, you're still an adult. You're, you, stop it. I, I think I would have grown. I would have allowed myself to grow so much more instructionally, uh, relationship wise and everything. If I didn't worry about that, it took me a while to get over that. It, it took me a, a, a while to get over that. Oh my gosh. I've literally thought about this so many times. Like, it's like <laughs> my first year, my first year was literally, I was a mess. I was an actual I was probably virgin on a bit of crazy. Like, like my partner probably would be like, virgin, you were, you were crazy. <laughs> this, this, like, I got it. I got the perfect sound for you. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. You're not really fine. <laughs> you just can't get into it because they would never. Yeah. That's like the perfect sound for that one. <laughs> it is. Like, do you like just know them all in your head? No, you've practiced them that much. You're just like, I know. Uh, I just got them. I just got them. It's like the podcast <laughs> DJ. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. I had to throw in that sound because I'm like, oh, that's like perfect for this one. That's like <laughs> fine when you're not okay, but um, that's that actually sums it up. Yeah, saying that you're just being okay with not being okay. Like I know people say that. I know people like that's like another quote that people throw out there. But mm -hmm. and I don't know if I could actually have done it. You know, like I don't think part of me wouldn't change my first year, even though it was the mm -hmm. way it was. It's completely put me on the path that I am on now. Like complete, like it's completely influenced every single thing that's happened to me because of it, and. I would look back and I would just say to myself, just be kind, be mm -hmm. kind to yourself. Like I was so in my own head and just attacking, like people outside of me weren't even attacking me as mm -hmm. much as what I was attacking myself. And I think that's why I'm, I'm, I'm interested in empathy and interested in being kind to each other, but also being kind to ourselves. And that's what, that's the big thing I would say to myself is just take a step back. Is it really going to be the end of the world tomorrow? If that doesn't happen, is it going to be the end of the world if this does happen 
and it really isn't so I think just being being kind to myself not being so not being my own worst enemy and I think that comes with life as well as teaching so yeah yeah and I think the 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 element that I try to get people to think about is that like be the friend you are to others to yourself and I think we're like terrible at that right we give our best advice other to other people and so I think that is something we have to connect with because it do, and it doesn't mean that you don't have areas to grow in either right like that I think that's it's not saying like oh no 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 I'm like I'm perfect the way I am it's like well I'm not saying that right it's but it's like you're you also like it's good to have expectations but you know you need to to kind of grow right Wow. First year teaching. Um, yeah, that was, that was quite a show. Um, um, and probably not a good show. Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know what, if I were to give myself, uh, some advice as a, as a starting teacher, one of the things I would say is, um, don't take yourself too seriously. Mm. Um, and I, I think that's one of the things that, uh, we do, especially when we start off in, in the profession is, um, that we feel like we've got to be this person who knows everything and can do everything. And, and um, you know, any question that's asked by a student, we should have the answer for, or at least we should be able to point them in the right direction. And usually it's more of, of, of the, of the former, which is have the right. right, answer. right. Um, um, and, you know, we, we don't open ourselves up to just kind of being human and, and showing students that we are, we are human. We make mistakes. We don't know everything. We we're growing and we're learning every day, just like they're supposed to be growing and learning every day. And so I, that's where that whole taking yourself way too seriously comes from. Um, and I think in my, in my first, I'd say first couple of years of teaching, that's probably one of the things that I, I did that I, if I could do all over again, I would, I would definitely change and take myself so seriously. Um, you know, um, I do a lot of laughing at myself now. Mm-hmm. Um, and quite frankly, I, you know, I encourage that with my staff, you know, yes, I'm the leader of a school district, but guess what? I'm just as goofy as everybody else. I make just as many mistakes as everybody else. Um, I say just as many stupid things as everybody else. Um, and you can call me on it. Um, yeah. um because guess what? I'm going to call you on it too. And that's how we're going to build relationship with one another. Gosh, um, there's so much advice. And and when you asked me to write this chapter, I kept thinking about how can I capture Mm -hmm. everything I want to say in one chapter? Mm -hmm. Um, Because to be honest with you, I feel like the way I lead and the way I have been on this educational journey is I look at every year as a first year. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I stay on the cutting edge of best practice. That's how I become better. That's how I can elevate others and make them better. So what are some of the things I think about? Always keep kids at the heart of decision-making. That's why we're here. It always comes back to kids, right? Um, So we can differ in our perspectives. We can have different approaches to teaching and learning or management of the classroom or building a classroom community. Um, But if kids are at the center of the conversation and, and you use the children to guide you, um, in everything you do, uh, you really can't go wrong. You know, get to know your learners. That's another piece of advice. Um, you know, yes, there's a curriculum to cover. There's a scope and sequence. But the significant learning happens when you're connecting to the hearts and minds of children. They want to know that you care about them. Um, when they know you care about them, they will work for you. Mm-hmm. And in meaningful ways, too. So that would be another one. Um, Seek out professional learning opportunities. That's another big one. I think when I was a younger teacher, I used to kind of wait for them to come to me. Like, oh, my, you know, my school district will provide those opportunities for me. And that happens. Yes, school districts do that. But because we have different learners in front of us every year and we work with different colleagues um, and things are are constantly evolving in, in the educational landscape that we live in, Mm-hmm. Um, seek those opportunities out. You know, if you know your learners and you, you're able to notice and name their needs, then find those opportunities that are going to benefit you and your students. That looks different for everyone, just like success looks different for everyone. That's another piece of advice. Don't compare yourself right. to other people. Right. Um, Theodore Roosevelt said, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. Once you start doing that, 
um, your mind starts running wild. It's mm -hmm. like you look at the glass half empty. What is it that I'm not doing instead of all the amazing things that you are doing? Um, use the room to share mm -hmm. ideas. Don't be afraid to ask for support. Find that network of support. There are always going to be people around you who have amazing strengths and will be there to support you. Get to know that community. Get to know who you can go to for help. And also, even if you find an interaction with someone who you're around to be unfavorable, mm -hmm. maybe you're not enjoying that, that's something to learn from too. Right. So capitalize on those moments as well. They're going to help you. At that time, I think, um, again, I was a self-contained EBD teacher. So I had this group of sixth through eighth grade. Right. They were all boys at the time. And we were at the last class at the end of a hallway, right? Because we were not exactly super welcome into the rest of the school community. And my first answer was, somebody tell me why our classroom is here. And this is like my first day of teaching. And the kids were like, oh, did they not tell you what job you signed up for? Mm. We're really naughty. And I thought, well, that's going to make for a really long year then if our goal here is right. that you're naughty and I'm, right. what, what do I do then? Help <laughs> me understand like how this works. And um, the story they told about what they thought they were at school to do, I was like, mm, I think you might have that wrong. <laughs> um, so we said, like, okay, let's be real. We are in a hallway at the very end, like we're in our own right. wing of the school. What does that say about us as a group? Mm. And they were like, we told you we're really naughty. And I said, Ooh, here's what I'll tell you. You guys are crazy smart and you're unskilled. So what's great about that is I'm pretty good at helping kids build skills. And so right out of the gate, I think something that stayed really consistent in my practice, it was my desire to figure out who these individuals are so that we can figure out what they need in order to go be successful at whatever it is they wanted to do. The thing I would challenge my own self on is I did so much of that by myself. Mm -hmm. I was the only teacher at the end of that hallway. There were amazing teachers who worked in that school with me that first year who I just, I was on a mission and I'm doing this kind of all on my own. And I learned a ton about being more collaborative the next year, my program moved to a different school. And so instead of being down a hallway by ourselves, we were the only class held in the basement. Um, so we worked on that quite a bit. And mm -hmm. by the end of the year, our class wasn't in the basement and the kids were in their least restrictive environment and where they should be. And they knew what was expected of them in those classrooms, but they still didn't do that enough by relying on the other people that did make up the strengths mm -hmm. of the whole team. And so that's something I feel like I've learned a ton on how to do is to say, okay, I'm really good at these things, or this is something I could learn really quickly to do on my own, but I need these other people because I am not actually that good at this and nor do I need to develop all the mm -hmm. expertise. Right? There are people around me I can do that with. And I became more and more and more collaborative as my career went on. And I co-taught in different situations. And I taught three-year-olds um, in Hawaii for a year and right mm. off by the beach and learned a ton about why school is so much fun. And I had a lot of thoughts on what is the difference between these three and four-year-olds that I had in an inclusionary classroom there? What happens to kids that by sixth and seventh grade, I was working with some kids who felt so unwelcome or so disconnected because there's something part of that that we do in schools, but it's not my job to solve that all by myself. Um, so that would be my advice to look back and give to myself is be uh, give myself a little bit more grace. Mm -hmm. I was probably working a lot harder, putting in more hours right. into the role than was super realistic. Then, at the then time. you are now, then you are now because no, I don't think that's possible. Hard. You know, I, I do tend to be very tend invested to work in, my bit. And in my life and in my family. Um, but no, but I would say that <laughs> I was spending that time just thinking it was all on me. And that is something that wasn't necessarily realistic. And so to get like narrow focused and then be more collaborative mm -hmm. with the people around me, like, that is something I would tell myself at that time. Gosh, I had so many key pieces. So I've got I've got to narrow it down to one. It's so funny because I have it open here, just going right. like, mm, is that the story I want to tell? Where do I go with this? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I would say one of the one of the pieces that I think has really, when I look back, when now that I've had a, I've had multiple student teachers, and this last student teacher, gosh, watching her, she's about to start her first 
her first year at her first school mm -hmm. that is in her own classroom, right? And so I've had many moments of her messaging me. It's only been now since March that we've been able to actually meet each other and see each other in person. But prior to this, we had never met in person. We were just meeting virtually. Mm -hmm. But I've had a lot of moments of ad advice. And ironically enough, her, uh, her name is Stephanie also. Stephanie Todd was my student teacher this okay. last year. So here I am like being asked to write a chapter about like, what advice would you give mm. to your first year teacher self? And I'm seeing this person who I see so much of my first year teacher self in her, right? And like, so I'm having this crazy like 360 moment as I'm writing this chapter. But some of the things that I have talked to her a lot about are really just owning who you are and being confident in that. And that, that, that for me was the hardest thing in the beginning and having the confidence to say when I don't know something and ask people for help when I needed help because I figured everybody around me already knew everything. So I had lots of those moments, whether it be at my first school or my next school where I thought that people already knew what was going on. And when I finally unpacked the layers, I realized that nobody knows. Everybody's just figuring it out right. as they go along, but some people fake it a little better um, and are, or they are, aren't willing to say it. But I just needed to be confident enough to turn to that person next to me and go, okay, how do you do this? And can we talk it through? And can we work together on it? And as I've become more confident in myself, I've been willing to collaborate with more people mm -hmm. and open myself up because collaboration means you open up, you open up and like let the world in on the way that you're doing stuff. Right. And sometimes that's scary, you know, scary to be judged, scary to worry. But I, I've become a much better person for it. And so being willing to share, but willing to listen and willing to ask. Right. The asking the, asking for help has served me well in so many ways, but I wish I didn't wait seven years to start to ask for help from people. Immediately, chill out, <laughs> chill out. It's gonna be okay. Tomorrow's gonna come, you're gonna do fine. You make a mistake, don't worry about it. Adjust, pivot and move on. You'll be fine, your kids are gonna be fine. They truly are. Um, focused on relationships and just chill out. Like I was so uptight and so stressed um, that I don't remember much. I remember my interactions with a lot with my students, but man, I was just so uptight outside of school. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Truly was. So I would say just chill out, relax. It's going to be okay. Did you, did you, I don't know if this is just me, but like, I, I cried in my first two years like, <laughs> all the time. Is that, is that just a George thing or is that a, I didn't, I didn't cry. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that makes me feel better that you said that. I, I did some stupid things. I said some stupid, stupid things. I had a lot of grace granted to me by yeah. my principal, um, Denny Souter. Shout out to Denny. God rest his soul. He was a phenomenal guy. He gave me a chance. Um, but he really, he was patient with me. I'm very, very patient with me. So, um, like I said, I would just tell myself, and I still tell myself, man, just relax mm -hmm. and chill out. Everything's going to be good. You know, teaching is hard work and mm -hmm. it's even harder if you're not yourself. So I would say that for me, I lead with my heart. I live with my heart. I, I speak to people with my heart. And so I would say, teach with your heart, whatever is in your heart, bring what you have to your children. So, you know, for me, I love to have fun and make sure, you know, like you, you say it all the time, like, would you want to be a student in your class? Mm -hmm. Right. I've heard you say that a number of times. And so I want to be that teacher. And I have kids too. I've always wanted to be that kind of teacher where they would love to be in my class. And they would ask me too, like, can we be in your class? Anyhow. Um, so like, you know, making sure that things were, were fun. Um, and I, you know, something that I've been sharing recently a lot is that in that every, every opportunity, oh, sorry, every interaction is an opportunity to uplift others through kindness and, and your gratitude and to help make their day a, a brighter one. And so you know, when I say lead with my, my heart, it's the same thing that in every child, you know, as, as a first year teacher, you may be struggling, you may have, you know, good days, bad days. Uh, but in every interaction that you have with a child, make it count, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you have an opportunity to uplift that child or tear them down. And there's no in between. There really isn't. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, through that and, you know, showing appreciation, because that, that's something that I, I really um, think it's so important to who I am is to really show appreciation. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and give you two. So right. the first piece of advice I got 
uh, the day before I stepped into my classroom and, uh, you know, someone said, just make sure that you build relationships with the kids. Like if you connect with them and you value them, you'll be fine. That is literally how I have worked with kids my whole career and anyone I met and it's been amazing. So I would keep that and I would, I would make that the mm -hmm. priority. The second thing I would do that I would change is I would have documented and shared what I was doing so much earlier. And, you know, it's no secret that you have pushed me to share and blog for the last five or six years. So thank you. Um, and it's been, it's been a tremendous um, growth opportunity for me, but I know the things that I was doing early on, I would have benefited so much more if I was documenting and sharing and connecting with people beyond my classroom and my school, it would have taken me to such different levels. Um, and so I wish that I would have done that earlier. And many teachers will say, but I'm not there yet. It's not perfect. I can't do it. And I said all those things. I wrote lots of papers. I stuck them on post-it notes, right? They were in like, they were turned in for assignments, but I never shared them with people other than my teachers or my teachers next door. Um, and, and I just think that that's something I would push every educator to do for themselves and for others. I think, um, it would be to give myself a little bit more grace. You know, I, I, as an individual, always have high expectations of myself. And I think I had two high expectations, probably like most of us coming mm -hmm. into our first year of teaching. And I made so many mistakes. I mean, I made so many mistakes. The biggest mistake I made was I started giving all of my kids these like um, tickets that were like for like extra credit that they could use at the end of the right. market period. Right. And at the end of the first market period, I thought it was a smashing success until I saw like a ticket deal going down in the hallway, <laughs> like some kid paying $10 for 10 tickets so that he could use them to bump up his grade. I'm like, what have I done here? Right? Like I right. couldn't believe it. Right. Then I tried Smart. to take away the tickets. That's an entrepreneur <laughs> class right there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I tried to take away the tickets. It was mayhem. I had right. parents emailing me. My kids love these tickets. Why are you taking them away? I mean, it was a disaster my first year. And I would think it was just, you know, one simple thing. Just give yourself grace. Like, try things. Don't feel like if you make a mistake that it's the end of the world. Because it felt like that year, every mistake I made mm -hmm. was kind of the end of the world, you know?